Hello, welcome to this exercise video. I hope you got the file now because I expect you to follow me as we go. So remember, the file's on jameswh.com slash finance. Let's get to Excel. This is going to be fun. I love this exercise. Right? So here, we're in the exercise, and I'm going to scroll to the side a bit so we can read what we have to do together, right? The goal of this exercise, uh, exercise, haha, you see this is my French side putting C's on exercise, it is to clean up the sheet so that all the data is visible. And as you can see, a lot of the data is not visible. So I put a list of what it should be done, but I'm just going to blow through it pretty quickly so that we can do it together. By the way, if you right click, and you unhide, you'll have the option to unhide this exercise uh, op table completed sheet, which will show you a more advanced f uh, version that's completed. But during the exercise, let's try to get that done. So I don't like when it, my, f my files start in, don't start in A1, and I certainly don't like it when I've got all of these columns here before my data starts. It's ideal to have your titles in a row one. So I'm going to clear out all this by selecting all of it and deleting it. And now you'll notice that it's all gone. And I have a big uh, a one row with the titles, which is what I wanted. I still want to get those things shown up later, so let's not forget to do them. Um, but let's move on to other things. You'll notice here my task numbers are all broken. It would be nice if it would just be one, two, and et cetera, et cetera. Some of you might remember the fill cursor, right? And I did all the one, two, threes. That's really great. If you look here, Maybe this could take a bit more space, right? The wrap text made them very long because my width of my column is too short. So I'm going to take, I'm going to grow my column and I'm going to notice, wow, there's a lot of useless space. So what I do is I select my whole column, I press wrap, and it rewraps it so that it fits nicer. And you see here, it fits much better and it takes much less space. But what I'm even going to do is I'm going to grow it even longer because I'm going to take a big bet. And now I'm going to rewrap again and rewrap again. And you'll notice what it does, it makes it fit really nicely and I'm pretty happy about what it looks like now. But remember when you're working with wrap text, you have to edit the width first. Then you'll notice I've got a start date and an end date. I've got pound, pound, pounds and numbers. What the hell is this? Look at this. The dates were just because it wasn't thick enough. So I went in between, I double clicked and I did it. Easy. Here, the end dates, they're just numbers. Meaning that I have to select my column, go here, it's written general and change it to a short date. And look at this now, it's become a short date. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Um, so I've got my dates, that was easy to do. Um, I have some work, I have some totals, and I can see the total that's working out, but I can see a value here. And I'm thinking, why is there a value? It's because of this here, right? Remember what I said about text being to the left and numbers being to the right. Well, look here, this 53 is a number, this 46 is a number, but this 27 hours is a text. That's why it's to the left. So if I remove this H, check this out, the value's fixed. That's why you have to enter your numbers properly so that there's no errors. So if I wanted these to have a nice design, so like the dollar signs, right? So this I could select and press the dollar sign button right over here and it's going to put dollar signs for me. That works out. Um, I can also put dollar signs over here by selecting and putting dollar signs. And voila, I've put some neat looking dollar signs. I could consolidate my borders, right? So first, what you do is you're going to clear your borders by selecting everything and going on the border button and saying that you want no borders. And this will remove all of the borders. And then you're going to redo the borders. So you select all of it. And you can re-go on this border button and hit all borders, or you can be even super fancy and go in your own more border buttons. And when you go in more borders, here you can play with the borders you want. So maybe I want thick borders outside, so I click the outline, and I want these little dotted lines inside. So now I've put dotted lines inside and a thick border outside. I hit OK, and look at this. I've got dotted lines outside, thick border inside. I'm also going to take my title and make the background white and my font, uh, the background black, sorry and my font white. And this is going to give it, you know, a contrasting look for the header row. And I'm pretty happy about that. And there's other things to do here. Uh, as you'll notice, I've removed the merge cells. Uh, formula errors should be fixed. That's good. I adjusted the borders. I added dollar signs. Top three most, uh, most expensive tasks in red. Wow. So I'm going to select all these tasks. I'm going to go under conditional formats. I'm going to go top bottom rules. And I'm going to say top 10. But I don't want top 10. I only want top three. So I scroll it down. And I said it that I wanted it in red. So it's already in light red fill, so I'll leave it like that. And now you see that the red cells that are the most expensive are 
the ones which are the highest, and that's super functional. You'll notice that in the bonus question here, I've got some inform in interesting information. You might be wondering, how do you add a 13% tax to this? You see, all you have to do is you go on your formula, right? And it's already doing the work multiplied by the rate, so maybe you also have to multiply it by the tax, which is 1.13%, right? The added tax, that's why we put 1. And then you see here, oops, maybe I should put some brackets. Oh yes, it's the percentage symbol, my problem. I'm sorry. Here. And you see now, it works. I, d I bring it down with the fill cursor because it's a very important cursor. And voila, they're all adjusted so that the tax is inbuilt in them. Very easy. Um, if I want to calculate the duration of each task, that I need to know a function. It's a complicated function called net work days. I'm going to add a column right over here. And, and I'm going to say duration. And if you're wondering how it works, it's very easy. You type net work days, right? So what I do is I type equals net, and then I hit tab. It's going to ask me for a start date and an end date. So I'm going to put my start date, and I'm going to put a comma, and I'm going to put an end date. Then I'm going to close my bracket. So you type network days, you open your bracket, then you put the start date, comma, the end date, and you hit enter. And it's going to give me this. What is this? It's just because it thinks it's a date, so it keeps the date format. In reality, it's the number 13. That's why it gave January 13th. So I'm going to fill it down, and you'll see what happens. I get all the durations for all of these tasks really easily. And these are business day durations. That's why I use the net workday function. If I just wanted to know the amount of days, I can just do equals the start date minus, oh no, sorry, the end date minus the start date. And by doing this, it will find dur the duration in days in between those two dates. Very cool, very functional. I like it a whole lot. Hopefully you like it too. Um, you know, I'd like you to create a small finance dashboard. I'd also would like to create a table right uh, table is easy you select one cell you hit control T it becomes a table and to make a small dashboard of finances then you know you'd have to think about what's interesting to you so maybe you want the total cost maybe you might also want the average task cost right and other types of information uh, let's just go quickly here the total cost would be easy you type equals sum you open the bracket you select your totals column you close the bracket and you hit enter. And these are the sum for all the costs. And the average is also easy. You type equal average. Right? You open your bracket, you select the whole column, and you close the bracket, and you'll get the average. So on average a task costs six hundred and twenty bucks, and my total cost for my project right now is uh seventy thousand four hundred and forty nine. And I could continue typing dashboard. But like I said, if you wanted you could just go see the example here that has all my functions in it with a small dashboard on the side. You also notice that I have here my top. How did I produce that? Well, it wasn't so difficult. I just remembered that shapes are quite a useful feature. So if I go under the insert tab, I'll have the shapes button somewhere, and you'll be able to insert a shape like one right here that says the name of the table. And if you want subparts, you can go under insert and you can go under shape again, and you can produce these subparts here, which is maybe this is for the project info. Right? You can adjust it so that it looks looks better in your shape. Right? And this is the project info. And maybe I've got another one. If I can create a duplicate by dragging it down. Oops. Sorry about that. Create a duplicate by dragging it with control. And now this one's not going to be the project info. This one's going to be the uh, accounting info. Right? Finance info. And now I can take this and drag it over here on top and try to adjust it best I can to make it look nice. And maybe change the designs and the color of it naturally. You know, I'm not going to spend all that time doing it in the video, but over here you can get, get an example of how much time can be spent at making it look nice. Hopefully this helps and that you'll be able to, you know, do this exercise yourself. Take the time to try it and to stop the video and to go back if there's stuff that you didn't see how I did properly and you'd like to look back. Remember that these are videos and I hope you like them. And this concludes the series on review, right? Uh, what we're doing next is going to be a lot of extra features. So we're completed with the exercises now, right?